All right, and welcome back. So in this video, we are going to be going through two sections of your guided notes, 6.3, which is all about polynomials, and 6.4, which is all about how to add and subtract those polynomials. So without further ado, let's begin. So looking at your guided notes on 6.3, polynomials. So I want to give you some quick vocab here. A monomial is a number, a variable, or a product of numbers and variables with whole number exponents. A polynomial is a monomial or a sum or difference of monomials and the degree of the monomial is the sum of the exponents in that monomial so let's let's talk about what we really mean by that let's find the degree of 8x squared y to the third and find the degree of negative 4 a to the sixth times b notice how these are monomials it's only one term a polynomial is when you start to have multiple terms. That's really the main difference here, is a monomial is one term, a polynomial is multiple terms. So what we're going to be doing here is we have to identify the exponents. Well, on the left, the exponents are 2 and 3. On the right, the exponents are 6 and 1. So the degree of these monomials are going to be the addition, the sum, of the exponents. So on the left hand side, the exponents again were 2 and 3, so 2 plus 3 is 5. On the right hand side, the, the exponents are 6 and 1, and 6 plus 1 is 7. Therefore, the degree of the polynomial is the degree of the term with the, is with the greatest degree, which is pretty confusing. Um, but when we have these multiple terms within an expression, the degree of that expression is going to be the highest degree of the term. So let's kind of play into what, to what we mean here. On the left-hand side, let's find the degree of 2x to the fourth, y to the third, plus 9x to the fifth. So if we're looking at this, we want to find the degree of each term. And then whichever degree is biggest, that is going to be the degree of the polynomial. I'm going to slide it to the left just a little bit. So since the degree of the first term, let me highlight for you, is 7, and the degree of the second term is 5, the degree of that entire polynomial is 7. Likewise, if we look on the right-hand side, finding the degree of 4ab plus 9a to the third, we have two terms. We want to find the degree of each term. And then the biggest degree is going to be the degree of the entirety. So we have 4ab, that degree is 2. Then 9a to the third, that degree is 3. So that, that means the degree of that whole polynomial is 3. The standard form of a polynomial is written when the terms are in order from greatest to least. That's it. The coefficient of the first term is what we call the leading coefficient. It's the one, in the, the one in the first spot, the one in the front. So if we were to write 5x plus 6x to the third plus 4 plus 2x to the fourth in standard form, what we want to do is we want to order the degrees from greatest to least, so in descending order. So if we had a degree of 10, that would be the first one, and if we had a degree of 1, that would be the last one. So we're going to identify the degree of each term. Notice how we're only looking at the exponents here. We're only looking at for variables. So we have 1, 3, 0, and 4. So therefore, we're going to write it in terms of greatest to least. Please be aware that as I upload this, I have a hole covering um, the guide notes. It should be negative 2x to the fourth plus 6x to the third plus 5x plus 4. There should be a negative sign in there. Silly me. Please work on problems 1 through 9 on your guide notes and resume when you're ready to move forward. All right, so polynomials have special names based on their degree and the number of terms that they have. A chart is given to you. So if you have a zero degree, it's called a constant. A one degree, it's linear, like y equals mx plus b. That's a linear equation. Soon we're going to be talking about quadratics, which are super fun. We have a degree of 2, meaning we have a quadratic. 3 is cubic. 4 is, is quartic, 5 is quintic, and then 6 or more is just 6th degree, 7th degree, 8th degree, 
so on and so forth. Now, if we have number of terms though, remember a polynomial is just a bunch of different terms. It looks like it's an expression with just things getting added or subtracted between them. If we have one term, it's a monomial, two terms, binomial, three terms, trinomial, and just four or more, we just call it a straight up polynomial. We, we do not get involved there. Uh, but with that, we can classify a polynomial based upon its degree and the number of terms. Well, if we're looking at 7x to the fourth plus 5x plus 3, we can first notice it's in the, the way that we want to write polynomials, going from biggest degree down to the smallest degree. So it's going to be a quartic trinomial because it has a degree of 4 and it has three different terms. So trinomial quartic is the degree. Perfect. And polynomials can be evaluated. If a ball is thrown straight up, straight up in the air from a height of four feet at a speed of 65 feet per second, we're given that the height of the ball in feet is given by negative 16 t squared plus 65 t plus four, where t is the time in seconds. How high is the ball after two seconds? Well, notice if we're given that t is the seconds, and then we're given two seconds, all we have to do is substitute in the value of two every time we see t. And we get after two seconds, the ball is going to be 70 feet high. And soon we're really going to be talking about these types of problems, but it's good just to know that we can evaluate these polynomials. Awesome. With that in mind, please work on problems 10 through 12 on your guided notes and resume when you're ready to move forward. So now that we've talked about polynomials, just have a general understanding of what a polynomial is. Again, a polynomial is just a bunch of different terms getting added or subtracted within like one expression, pretty much. Well, now we're going to be talking about how to add and subtract those polynomials. So this is 6.4 in your guide notes, adding and subtracting polynomials. Here we go. So you can add or subtract polynomials by simply combining like terms. So the following are going to be like terms, 4y and 7y, 8x squared and 2x squared, 7m to the fifth and m to the fifth. We, at this point in our mathematical careers, we're very strong with identifying like terms. So notice that these variables are raised the same exact power. They have the same exponent. The following are not going to be like terms. 3x squared and 3x, because that's the same variable, but a different exponent. 4y and 7, one has a variable and one doesn't. And 8m plus and 3n, that's the same power, but those are different variables. They have the same exponent, but it's just different variables. So those are not going to be like terms. Let's say we want to add 3x squared plus 4x plus 5x squared plus 6x. Well, we can do that. We're going to be identifying our like terms. We're then going to rearrange those terms. That way they look together. This is a part that you can skip if you feel very confident with your mathematical ability, by the way. And then we're just going to combine our like terms. Therefore, we end up with 8x squared plus 10x. Now, if we have parentheses, we can still add these together. Let's say we want to add these two polynomials. We have 5y squared plus 7y plus 2. You want to add that with the polynomial 5y squared plus y plus 8. Well, it's going to be the same exact process. We can't simplify within the parentheses. We're going to, so we're just going to identify some of our like terms. We can rearrange them. That way they are together. Again, if you feel confident in your ability at this point in time, feel free to not have to arrange them. You can just start to add and combine these like terms. We combined our like terms and we end up with 9y squared plus 8y plus 10. Awesome. With this in mind, please work on problems 1 through 10 on your guided notes and resume when you're ready to move forward. All right, so we talked about adding polynomials. Now we're going to talk about how to subtract polynomials. And here's where it gets a little bit different. We have to remember to add the opposite. This is going to be a very helpful tip when we start to subtract. We want to be adding the opposite because it can get a little bit messy. So when we're talking about the opposite, 
we want to first want to find the opposite of a polynomial just to make sure we understand the concept. So we're going to be asked to find the opposite of 5m to the third minus m plus 4. Well, the opposite is all of that multiplied by negative 1. We want to find the opposite of all of those individual terms. Therefore, we end up with negative 5m to the third plus m minus 4. So we're simply changing the signs because we're distributing a negative 1. We're trying to find the opposite of each individual term. If we find the opposite of each individual term, we find the opposite of the entire polynomial that is made up of those terms. Hopefully you're following along with me. That, that part might have been confusing. When we talk about opposites, we're just trying to find the opposite sign of each individual term within the polynomial because then we can start to add them. So let's say we're going to subtract 4x to the third plus x squared plus 7 minus 2x to the third. So we want to subtract 2x to the third from this polynomial. Well, we know that when we are subtracting, we're technically adding the opposite, right? If we have, for example, 5 minus 3, that's also the same as 5 plus negative 3. So when we subtract, we're really adding the opposite, which is why we wanted to identify the opposite of a polynomial. So we're going to start out with our equation, and we're going to change that 2x to the third. We're going to find the opposite. So now we have plus negative 2x to the third. And now we're going to identify those like terms, just like we have done before. We're going to rearrange them. Again, feel free to not have to rearrange, but if it helps you, please, by all means, go ahead and do it. And then we're just going to be combining these like terms. So the only difference here is that we are going to be adding the opposite when it comes to subtraction. It makes it less messy. If you want it to get really messy and tough and tricky, you can. You can just start, start to subtract some things, but it gets very difficult because we're using the properties of addition. So we want to make sure that everything looks like it's in addition. Sweet. Now let's subtract these polynomials together. Again, just like before, we're going to rewrite as adding of the opposite. Then we're going to identify those like terms, and we're going to combine those like terms together. Awesome. With this in mind, please work on problems 11 through 18 on your guided notes. Fantastic job with this, kiddos. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you soon.